So of course it's all about this Galaxy Fold still. I mean, I haven't been this interested in a smartphone for a very long time, as I'm sure you can tell. There's so many changes to the day-to-day -day adjustments that you make as a user. And of course the questions, they're all flowing in. I covered a couple of those things in the previous video in which I compared this Galaxy Fold to the other flagship devices, comparing YouTube, multi-window, multi-application, Instagram, Facebook, and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, go check out that video. But this video exists to address a very specific question, gaming. What about gaming on this phone? You have this gigantic display now. You would think it would work really well for gaming. Where my skepticism came in, in the early stages, was around the types of games that exist for mobile. They're designed with a smartphone form factor in mind, something like this. And then so typically the controller layouts the experience, pretty much the whole thing is developed around that form factor. So I was like, let's see what's happening in games. Let's play a few games. What's better, what's worse, and so forth. Maybe we should kick it off with Mario Run. Look at that, okay. So Mario Run is an interesting one because it's a portrait game. And then the other thing is like, is the screen really being taken advantage of? Does the game get any better having more display? In some games, yes. Other games, maybe less so. In this game, for example, you kind of just end up with more sky, like a lot of it. Now, some people love this game. Some people hate this game. It's an homage to the original, but it's definitely not a replacement for the original. And it's just the kind of game that requires very little input from you. So many games are developed for, for play on tiny little screens. So the interaction is limited by the hardware. I'd say this is an example of a game that doesn't really benefit that much from the bigger display and maybe you could argue could argue is worse on the big display Be beyond the fact that it looks great the overall experience of that game is tuned for a smartphone slender portrait display more so than this unusual form factor in my opinion now this next game i'm gonna say is the opposite alto's adventure kind of snowboarding down this hill and you jump over some rocks and you chase these uh these creatures these llamas i just hit a rock there because it's so bright in here these things here you can grind there you go see this game i feel like benefits a lot of games that work in landscape mode, I think benefit because it sets your hands further apart, but it frees up all this extra space here. So if you saw in this game, for example, the hill is kind of coming from here. You just would see a lot less of where you're coming from and where you're going. Now there's other games, we could say for example, you know, a tower defense game, for example, like this, you just have more room to maneuver and to look at what you're doing. I'd say it improves the experience quite a bit. It's like playing it on a tablet. So tower defense games, I think are a bonus. You could still play on the exterior display. Maybe I should do that real quick. I don't know if anyone would actually do this. You could play this game here with one hand. So far having used this device, I just hate using this. Like I don't want to use this screen. This screen is just strictly a backup for like picking up a phone call. That's it so far. Using this exterior display is just a bit depressing. Like it works. And as you can see, this game is totally developed for a smartphone experience. It's a bit depressing. You know that you have this enormous screen on the inside. You could do other things on it, but I don't recommend it. Just pop it open. It takes two seconds. Yes, there's the option with portrait style games to go onto the outside display and, and play them in a more typical smartphone fashion, but I do not recommend it. Another example of that is this game Downwell, which I find to be kind of terrible on the, the full display. I mean, it works. It's developed more for a narrow, a narrow display and you don't really benefit from the extended display. Now, I should get into the couple of examples where this thing's amazing. PUBG is a game where I feel like it's beginning to take advantage of the extra real estate. This is a game which is a shooting game. You have on-screen controls which take up space. Now, on a typical smartphone, the whole experience is pretty cramped. This is the opposite experience. This is like a tablet experience, but the benefit is it doesn't have the weight of a tablet. This thing is so much lighter than a typical tablet. You feel like you have a real advantage over someone who's playing just on a regular smartphone. And the same thing actually goes for the left thumbstick. You just have more room to roam around without interfering with what you see.
like I said, that's the perfect example. The extra real estate and what that means for you within the game, whether you're launching the map and trying to look at precise stuff, or <laughs> even when I targeted that guy earlier and I had the crosshairs, I was looking down to crosshairs and he's a tiny little speck. So having it scaled up, does there's, a, there's an actual value in that. So when you're thinking about picking this up as a gaming device, I think it's important to think about which game you like to play and then you'll know whether there's gonna be an improvement. This one looks amazing. So this is CSR and this one is really showcasing the hardware better. It presents interesting opportunities as well for game developers to think about these formats differently, like what mobile gaming has to be if you're not confined to the typical smartphone form factor. That dude, he's gaining. It's another one that I feel like benefits from the bigger display because it just looks good. It's just more to look at. I'll do Zombieville here. So this is a side scrolling type of game. I mean, you move up and down a little bit, but it's very arcadey. What's the benefit? I mean, are you really gonna be that much better at it? It's just more room to roam around. It just looks a bit better. It looks good, very colorful. So this is like a forward moving, swipe kind of situation. Jump, swipe. Oh, that's a duck, by the way. Now these type of games, I do feel like are better on a bigger display as well because you can have more deliberate swipe movements. I mean, it just looks cooler as well. And you can see, I mean, you just see more obviously. So what have we learned here? Well, yeah, I mean, this thing is a powerhouse. It's not going to have a problem with any mobile gaming graphics that are out there, whatever it is that you want to play. But some games, I think you're actually going to have an advantage on here. Games like PUBG, whereas others actually don't work as well, like uh, Downwell, for example, or possibly Mario Run. So it does depend what type of games you're into. You do have the external display if you want to play a one-handed kind of casual game. The type of games I would want to play, they're all better when utilizing the extended, the bigger display that the Fold gives you. It doesn't get too hot, not overwhelmingly, and it gives you kind of a tablet-like gaming experience without the bezels you would typically have on a tablet or the weight that you would typically have with a tablet. So you get the bigger display without those downsides. And then at the end of it, you can, of course, just pop it in the pocket. So gaming as expected it's good on the fold i think you'll be happy with it but single-handed vertical